and it's right here from in Jamaica. So it, it continues to grow and evolve as movements do. So what would you say about Rastafari? What is the state of Rastafarianism today in 2018 Jamaica as you see it? Well, Rastafari is very important because we have to look into the whole aspect of the nation and we, we are made up of roughly 90% people from African descent. And Rastafari evolved out of the vision of Marcus Giavi who said, look to Africa if you want to see God. Look to, to God through the eyes of Ethiopia. And this is how the early exponents of Rastafari saw his imperial majesty as king and being crowned king in the Bible it says Israel's king is Israel's God. And this is how his majesty was proclaimed as, you know, God. How 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 is Rasta culture um, influenced Jamaican culture? Very much. Well, we just have to look at the music in itself. Music and dancing, because we have taken everything from Africa. Could we not evolve into what we now call reggae and have evolved into dance art? So it plays a very important part in centering us as a people. And we have to really look seriously at religion, because even now the churches are disputing that image of Christ that was foisted upon the people. Rasta from day one had said, God must be an African God, because Genesis chapter 2 verse 13 says, God made man his own image and placed him in the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden runs, there's a river running through the Garden of Eden and it runs through Ethiopia. So the Garden of Eden is Ethiopia, and this was the interpretation of the early Rastafari exponents. Yeah, so Rastafari was religion, but it's also a way of life. It's, it's it is a now evolved to a way of, it's a way of, way of life. Dressing, very it? much so, very much so. Is it still relevant to young people? Yes. My interaction on a daily basis with school youths, they are very interested and they are really wanting to learn the talk, all the aspects of Rastafari is what they, they want now. When you look around the world, the persons that are drawn to Rastafarianism um, are drawn to several things. Maybe it's naturalness. They, they consider a Rastafarian connected to the earth. Very much so. Peaceful, uh, spiritual. Is that something that continues or is that are themes that continue throughout the Rastafarian movement? It continues. And one of the things that we should look at very seriously is how we eat. When Rasta was saying way back in the 30s, you must eat Ital. And it is way into the 80s, 90s, and, and even the, into the 21st century, you know, that people are saying that you have to eat a better quality food. And the, the organic food is what is the food of choice. So all these preservatives that, and the rise of cancer is through these preservatives. And the many studies have been done to prove this. So we have to look at the, the originality of the Rasta man in saying, eat idle, eat healthy. And it is showing now, Jamaica would save billions of dollars if we were eating healthy. Mm -hmm. Just like Christianity, there are several houses of Rastafari. Very much so. Um, are you a divided house, as some people like to say? No. As we, the, the phraseology that we use is unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. We have different houses of Rastafari that interprets the doctrine different. So we have the Naya Bingi, we have the Baba Shanti, we have the Coptic, we have 12 tribe of Israel, and the list goes on. And just, you know, we suffer the same thing of interpretation like the, the church itself, because the church has over 5,000 denominations today, and all proclaim Christ to be the leading deity in, in the religion. You're part of the Ainiti Council. Yes, I'm a part Council. of the Rastafari Ainiti Council. Our mission is to really bring a oneness to Rastafari, just as the, the, the World Council of Churches or the Jamaica Council of Churches try to bring a, a, a unity within the economical services. We are doing the same thing within the Rastafari Unity Council. Let me take a quick switch to music. So, of course, Rastafarianism has been associated with reggae music perhaps primarily, but also there's an African rhythm or Africanness, if I wanted to describe it that way, to how the Rastafarian associated music. Is that, is, has dance hall lost some of that? Is, is there, has dance hall grown away from Rastafari? Has, is, is that something that you would describe that way? You would see that way? What we are seeing now is a fusion of the, 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 the reggae beat with um, hip hop or whichever type of music out there 
we are having a fusion of reggae with, with Calypso, we have a fusion of reggae with the, the, the Afro-Caribbean beat. So we have to understand that as the world expands, you know, and the music is out there, people will experiment with few different fusions of music and, you know, reggae has been affected just as elders. If we can talk about country for a bit, how has the um, legislative change um, been benefiting Rasta? It has not been benefiting the Rastafari community. And the Rastafari community who are, you know, I would say, quote-unquote, the expert on growing um, ganja to get that high THC content in it. Now, we notice the Cannabis Licensing Authority has put so much conditionalities on getting this license, which it means that you have to be a multimillionaire to get these licenses, you know, some of the criteria that they have put before you can get this license. Now, we are saying no way. And we are actually exploring now the Constitution, Chapter 3 of the Constitution, because this is our holy sacrament, and if you are going to infringe on our rights, then you are now infringing on the cons our constitutional rights. So we are exploring, you know, how but can the constitutional we move um, the, the, the conditional things have to do more with um, growing for, um, for sale, not, not for um, religious rights. No, Section 10 is still not total. It still limits you to two ounces of, of, of ganja. So we are saying, as our religious sacrament, there should be no limitations and what. If you see a Rasta man with a crocus bag of ganja, you should let him go. There should be no limitations. That's a very clear statement um, from Aisha Kabusa. Thanks for joining us this evening. Welcome. <laughs> We will talk to Aisha Kamusa about Rastafarian and its impact on Jamaican culture, of course, which is great. But now time for our social media.